Eric Tov Chabrim. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Uh, several things we wanted to report real quick to you guys. Rockets uh, on Sunday were fired into Israel. I'm sure many people are already aware of that. And uh, today, Israeli government responded back by uh, attacking a compound following the rocket fire, the IDF there, uh, against Hamas targets in the Gaza Strip there. So the Israeli Air Force on Sunday night launched an airstrike on military compound belonging to Hamas terrorist organization in central Gaza, the IDF spokesman said in a statement. The attack was a retaliation on the Shahar Hangev Regional Council in southern Israel. But as usual, usual with Israel, they always warn in advance that they're going to do an attack. So normally there is no casualties as a result unless uh, Hamas people decide to put in some uh, people there just to get them blown up for the heck of uh, the heck of it on their own side there. They always love to get casualties to make themselves look more um, like the victim, you might would say there. The Intifada, the third Intifada, is still underway. And as we reported recently about these uh, knives being used and how it is a biblical fulfillment of prophecy about falling, uh, about the edge of the sword, uh, that they would be thrown to the edge of the sword. Uh, two wounded in a stabbing attack in Samaria. One is critical. Both of them are women that were attacked there. Uh, it says uh, two women were stabbed, uh, attack that took place on Monday afternoon near Beit Haron, located to the northwest of Jerusalem in Samaria's Benjamin district. The two terrorists who uh, conducted the attack, in which one victim was critically wounded and another moderately wounded, were shot by a security guard and later died of their wounds there. Uh, and an ex in improvised explosives were found shortly afterwards adjacent to the scene of the attack by security forces. A police bomb squad member was rushed to the scene to dismantle the explosives. The residents were asked to stay indoors shortly afterwards. A second explosive, described as a pipe bomb, was also located, followed shortly afterward by a third explosive device uh, discovered nearby. Um, anyway, so far the girls 123, the other age 58, the 23 year old is the one that is in the critical condition, the 58 year old is the one that is in moderate condition there. Uh, we'll wait to see how uh, her outcome comes. It's just kind of odd that here recently it has been all women that have been attacked by the terrorist. Uh, we had the uh, pregnant woman just uh, last week there that was stabbed and even before that another lady that uh, died of her wounds uh, from another terrorist stabbing. It is very evident that the Palestinian terrorists are going for the weakest of the, of the people um, among the uh, citizens in Israel in order to uh, make it easier for them to kill their victims. Uh, also, RT News is reporting that the peace talks between Damascus and opposition uh, leaders is to start on January the 29th in Geneva. Uh, we do plan to be in Geneva uh, and try to cover some of this event as well. It is going to be a six-month uh, negotiations, according to John Kerry. Uh, he kind of likes those numbers, doesn't he? Did Israel with nine-month negotiation in order to fulfill the prophecy of Rebecca? Now he's doing one that is a six-month negotiation that is supposed to last there in Geneva. And of course, we already know that uh, the, the United States has hinted around that they would be putting more troops on the ground in Syria, and that if the talks do not go well, that they're going to do something drastic. Well, that's going to put Russia right in their crosshairs if they do, because that means they want to topple Bashar al-Assad, and Russia has vowed to protect Bashar al-Assad. So be interesting the way this is all going to play out. And another thing, too, just to kind of let you know, we are doing a very in-depth look at a subject that many people have followed for years, and yet a subject we've kind of steered clear from. In fact, I don't think I have ever reported before on Planet X or Nibiru. Uh, and recently, we know there were scientists that discovered what they call the ninth planet beyond Pluto. It is three and a half times are three and a half times uh, si bigger than the Earth, three and a half times bigger than the Earth. Uh, we are working on an in-depth look at this particular so-called Planet X. And of course, uh, there are people like Bob Fletcher, who will be a guest on our program in about two weeks' time. We'll be having Bob Fletcher on uh, to speak about this as well. 
Uh, but we are definitely going to look into this, and I am not saying that I am for or against it either way at this point here, but I have been seeing some very compelling evidence. Bob Fletcher states, though, that the ninth planet that was discovered by the scientists recently here is not the planet X. He said there is a yet another planet out there with four moons around it. But the reason why we've decided to look at this is because there is a biblical passage that many people have never associated as of yet that I believe is clearly evident of planet X. So I've been doing an in-depth study on this, and it may have a lot to do also with the different wars that are being fought around the world. And if that is the case, we may find that the Middle East is being fought for a specific purpose in mind. And it may not just be for the oil. It could be for something even bigger than that. It may also be a one reason why the Pope has already announced uh, last year about the possibility of him resigning. I kind of thought it was interesting that he said any, you know, anywhere from two to three years or four to five years. Now, some people are saying that Planet X would come by this year, January, excuse me, in March of 2016. I don't know if that's really the case, though. But then again, I'm not an expert on the subject. I'm just kind of looking at the way prophecy plays out. And that's what I've been investigating on. So, again, I'm not saying it is. I'm not saying it's not. But I'd like to share with you just some of the thoughts that I have regarding the possibility of there really being a Planet X out there. And what if it does come this way? We do know the Bible scriptures and Revelation that speaks about them hiding in the rocks of the earth and crying for them to fall on them and hide them from the, from the, uh, from, from the Son of God, or from God because He's come to judge the earth. It's one reason why I question, is this really fixing to happen now? I know that the time frame originally was given 2013 to 2020. I kind of think that if it is coming, it may be closer to the end of that time frame. But I could be wrong altogether. Just a thought there. Just wanted to share that with you, let you know what we're working on, and something we'll be sharing with you. Hopefully I'll have put together well enough tomorrow evening to share that with you, to give you a little insight on just our own thoughts of what we see in this. And then in about two weeks' time, we'll have Bob on as well. We haven't set the date yet, but Bob has agreed to come on Israeli News Live to talk about his thoughts on this Planet X. Nibiru, that is. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Shalom and good evening.